Hey guys, I'm Philip Wilder, and I'm going to be sharing with you guys today about why we put on masks. No, no, not surgical or safety coronavirus type masks. I'm talking about these type of masks and these type of masks. So let's get to it. So today we're going to be looking at Philippians 2 verses 1 through 4 and we're going to be answering why we put on masks and how we can take these masks off. And so it says, so if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. So there's a few main reasons why we put on masks, and the purpose of these masks is ultimately to hide from other people. We don't want other pe people to fully understand who we are, or to see maybe our blemishes. So a few reasons why we might do this, as it says right here in verse 3, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Well, I think if we are selfish, if we have a selfish ambition and we're striving towards something for personal gain, then we might want to cover it up and make other people look better, well, look at us and try and see the best side of us. We don't want them to see our flaws because we're focusing on ourselves. It's selfish or in the same case with conceit. So if we're trying to promote ourselves, then we want to hide the bad things about ourselves because we want others to see that we are the best. And so if we want others to think that we are the best, then we have to completely remove ourselves from all of our flaws, even if that might be a physical facial flaw, in which case we put on a mask, not a literal mask, but maybe that means makeup or we do something to our face to make ourselves look more appealing because we're trying to hide our insecurity. Or we have conceit, and ultimately conceit is pride. If we are prideful, then we think we are the best people there are. So that means that we're going to hide again all of our insecurities. And that might not just be physical things or visible things. That might mean like never willing to say that you're sorry or that you messed up or admitting to any sort of sin whatever it might be you might want to try and cover up all those things and put on this facade this mask that you are the best person there is or that you are the best christian there is maybe that's your mask you're trying to become the best christian on the planet well, another reason why we might put on masks is because we have a low self-esteem. And now I want to be clear here, low self-esteem is not humility. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking about yourself less. <laughs> and so when we are, when we have a low self-esteem, basically what we're saying is we want to be prideful, but when we compare ourselves to other people, we don't measure up and so therefore we don't like who we are and that's another reason why we could put on a mask and try and pretend to be someone we're not so that we can be that person that we really want to be even though we know we aren't that person so in the end one of the main reasons why we put on masks summing up all those things is both pride and comparison if we stop comparing ourselves to other people then we'll simply be who we are and recognize that God loves us for who we are. So we need to stop comparing ourselves to other people and stop maybe trying to strive towards their level of success or their perfectly cute looking family or their organized and in shape house or their perfectly manicured lawn, whatever it is. We need to stop comparing ourselves to others and simply follow as God is calling us to go in life. So that's a few reasons why we might put on masks, as this kind of mentions here. But a few reasons how we can take off these masks and just be genuine in who we are, we can see in this, in verse 1, it says, So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. So 
ultimately the premise of this verse here is that we should be united in the body of Christ and have love for one another. And if we have that sort of love, we will be comfortable around each other, as it says, any comfort from love. Then we can start taking off our mask because we know that we're going to be accepted no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, and can just be real with one another and be honest with one another. So first, we need to find true comfort in Christ and in a good body of believers with people that we really trust, that we can be vulnerable and real with them. Now, it's important that we actually do take off our mask when we find these sort of places. And even before we find these sort of places, we should find our confidence in God and in God alone based off of what he says about us. Another reason that we can, well, another way that we can take off our mask is simply by being humble. As verse 3 says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. If you're confident in who God has called you to be, then you can be humble and recognize that other people are better at certain things than you are. You can acknowledge other people might be better looking than you are, more athletic than you are, more smart than you are, or better at managing their family or a business or a better worker, whatever it might be. People are going to be better than us in different things, and that is totally fine. <laughs> we don't need to be the best in everything. We can be confident in who God has called us to be. So we can take off our masks by being humble and simply, simply recognizing that other people are good too, that we don't need to be the best, and that our focus in life is not to point other people to ourselves, but to point people to God. And through that, we can then encourage one another and focus on one another and consider others better than ourselves. I think a, we can learn a lot from who Christ was as a person. And if we continue on here, verse 5 through 8, it says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, th though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So Jesus showed us the ultimate sign of humility, and by following Jesus' example and just desiring to serve other people, we'll be less conceited about ourselves, and we can start taking off our masks. We won't be comparing ourselves to others, but we'll instead be focusing on helping other people. So I hope this can encourage you to really be yourself in front of other people and to acknowledge that God loves you exactly who you are. So I hope and pray that you can take this and share this message with other people and just act out of this confidence to be able to love other people well rather than love other people in a way that is ultimately selfish and is trying to point people back to you. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Philip Wilder and have a great day.